What goes up must come down, right? Well, unless you've figured out a way to harness an untapped force in the universe, enter this lab and everything you know gets tossed out the window. Welcome to the world of John Hutchison, where the improbable may just become our reality. John Hutchison has been dabbling with electricity for decades, copying the work of famed scientist Nikola Tesla, whose AC power still runs our world. Along the way, messing about with military surplus gear, John may have stumbled across one of the most amazing scientific discoveries of our age. Experimenting with radio waves and electricity led John to discover an effect which has mystified government and military scientists. It boils, it bends, it sends objects flying through the air. I was building these replications of Tesla's old machines and found them doing fascinating things. Then this whole thing happened, this fluke kind of thing, the Hutchison effect. This was some effect. Air squeezed out of bottles, ice drinks moving through space, drill bits levitating. An effect so convincing and so varied, it seemed impossible to fake. In John's labs, I've actually seen levitation of rock. I've seen levitation of steel, steel ball bearings, glass, where they will levitate. Unbelievable. I've seen electricity go right into the objects, and a million pieces just fly apart. In fact, using only 75 watts of energy, enough for a small light bulb, Hutchison made a 60-pound cannonball rise off the table. It would also fuse dissimilar materials, heat metal, but not burn the wood it sat on, shatter metal, as well as change its crystalline structure. This was something to write home about. Beginning of 1980, experimenting with all the electromagnetics and uh, electrostatic equipments I had at the time, I started to notice some very, very unusual effects, such as a room being filled, filled up very quickly with multicolored lights, steel bars sitting on wood and not causing any fires, metal turning to jelly, things levitating and jumping off to the ceiling or simply go up, hover, and then fall back down. Dubbed by some as the poltergeist machine, there is no one machine, just a lot of old army surplus gear, randomly tuned by John. No one knows how it works. John has apparently figured out the right combination of radio waves and electrical energy to create the effect. If it could be proven, its impact would be huge. You'd have to rewrite most of the science textbooks, especially the part about what goes up. And the story gets even weirder, involving both the Canadian and U.S. military intelligence. Here we go, into my place. Canadian government seized my laboratory, which was 22 tons of equipment, I came back from Germany and moved into this place here and started my experiments again with army surplus and navy surplus equipment, which I got from, actually from warships, and bought a lot from various surplus stores in the United States and Canada, starting in 1994. And some of this equipment actually goes back to the 1940s, directional finding equipment, all kinds of neat configuration of waveforms and that, right up to 44 gigahertz. That gives me a wide range and wide spectrum of fields and that to work with. Of course, given the potential magnitude of an effect which can turn metal into jelly and levitate objects, it wasn't long before news leaked out. In this case, to Colonel John Alexander with INSCOM, U.S. Army Intelligence whose specialties included training people to bend metal with their minds, or PK, psychokinetic training. Well, they had an eight millimeter film, and it was purported to have been taken in Canada, and it showed various items that were levitating, falling, accelerating, uh, the breadth of materials that seemed to be affected by whatever the effect was was certainly interesting because it wasn't just metal it clearly wasn't just some big magnet or something like that and it was sufficiently interesting that we said want to learn more about that so we agreed to fund him why was the army so interested in john's effect 
Well, look at all those objects going up instead of down. They knew a hot property when they saw it. This anti-gravity could have a huge impact on military aircraft. New types of propulsion in weight-reduced planes could fly higher and faster. So Colonel Alexander and his team went to Vancouver to test John's effect. During 1983, U.S. Army Intelligence and Los Alamos National Laboratories set me up in a large laboratory. We did four months of testing. We had a team of six people from Army Intelligence and from Los Alamos, including myself, that came out for the demonstration. As usual, John revved up his machines to create his electronic force field to start the effect. Exactly what happened next is still debated by the various participants. And things started off very good, actually, because there was a whole battery of lights, fluorescent lights that lit up really bright and then exploded, and then incandescent lamps in this massive warehouse lit up. The effects that happened always happened when we were not present, and so cannot give any first-hand uh, evidence. Time progressed in all these experiments. Um, we get mirrors breaking apart, um, voltage, odd voltage things happening. But Colonel Alexander had given John some metal rods he used in his psychokinetic work to test the validity of people's metal bending claims. These rods could only be bent through extreme measures, like heating them to thousands of degrees. Probably the most interesting was a molybdenum rod that I used in uh, PK testing. And what had happened is he presented to me, it had a slight S-curve in the rod itself. We looked at it very carefully to see if it had been heated and gripped or something like that and found no indication uh, that it had. That suggested to us that there were effects that were going on. In the end, Bob, a skeptical Los Alamos investigator, deemed the tests inconclusive. And according to this letter from Los Alamos, all documents pertaining to the Hutchison tests were destroyed. According to Bob, the one man, things didn't work. And let's forget about it and classify it. While officially the tests were brushed aside, Colonel Alexander has kept an open mind. Even though nothing happened, during our investigation when we were present. Uh, five of the six people present believed that it probably did happen, it just didn't happen you know, while we were there. But the fact remained that the U.S. intelligence services left, apparently having written the effect off. Then on the 24th of February, 1990, something strange happened. John was out of the country when his lab was forcibly seized by the Canadian government. Despite a court order to return it, John never got his equipment back. When he tried to move his experiments to Germany, the authorities there refused him permission. Months later, John heard a rumor that his brainchild was not dead and buried, but was being studied by the American military. It was basically classified, and I've been hearing stories for years and feel now that they did get results and are replicating it at Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. Was it a rumor, or was the largest military power on the planet experimenting with the Hutchison effect? <laughs>